One thing that motivational speaker is supposed to never tell you or that you heard that a motivational speaker is never to tell you is that you can't. You can't. You're not supposed to tell people they can't. That's no way to encourage anybody. Tell them they can't do something. But I will tell you tonight that the most powerful motivational speeches that I have ever heard came from people who told me I couldn't do something. <laughs> you know why? Because when they told me I couldn't do it, I was bound and determined to show them that I could. Tell me I can't do it. I will prove you wrong. I will show you <laughs> that you're mistaken. You have chosen the wrong one to tell that they can't do something. Because I believe, and this is real important, I can't will thwart you, will stop you, will slow you down, will turn you around and cause you to move backwards if you let it. But if you have the proper mindset, I can't will do nothing but make you that more determined to get to your goal. People don't want to exude that much passion in which it becomes obsession because they're fearful of their obsessions. Well, if I'm obsessed about this topic, it's going to take away from my family, from my time. Um, it's going to introduce a lot of you know, fear or unknown to me, so they back off. But I tell people all the time, there is a difference between passion and obsession. And high performers have obsession about the topic, right? They are obsessed about the topic in which they're trying to learn, master, grow into. And so that obsession is real. And I tell people the difference, here's how you know the difference between the two. When you're passionate, everybody cheers you on. They're stoked for you. Oh, you found your passion? Awesome. Follow your passion. Live with passion. Be passionate. When you're obsessed, they're like, why you gotta be so crazy? Why can't you be satisfied? Why do you always gotta get things so perfect? Why do you spend so much time here? When you're obsessed, people think you're nuts. So it's different. And it's like, I always tell people, if no one thinks you're crazy, you're not yet operating to the outer limits of your potential. You're not there yet. If you wanna be great, not good, not also grand, not second, not third, if you want to be great, the very best at what you do, obsession is a necessity. You must be. Ain't no two ways about it. Obsession. Nobody got to be the best at anything. I don't care if you flip pancakes, you sweep porches, you wash dishes, you bust tables. If you're the very best at it, you are obsessed about it. And obsessed about it means you slept and you dreamed and you ate that. I will be the very best at what I do. I am determined to be the very best at what I am. And you and you and nobody can tell me that I can't do it because I am obsessed. Somebody in your life should say, Man, you really care about this in like a crazy way. And when you get there, you know you found your thing. And not everybody, find, not everybody finds that. Question the impossible. The greatest achievements of mankind were made by people who questioned impossible. The Wright brothers, oh, you can't fly, it's no way. If we're supposed to fly, we'd be born with wings. Christopher Columbus, the world is flat, Chris, the world is flat. And at that time, it was accepted by everyone to be true. Question what people call impossible. Four minute mile was the limit. No, no way possible. Okay, what tell you? No way, no way possible. You're gonna run a mile in under four minutes. It just can't be done. Roger Bannister said, I think I can do it. 
I think I can do it. Anyone out there any preceded to do just that? Not me, not I. <laughs> you have chosen the wrong one to tell something like that to. I will show you, I will show you what I can do. I will show you, I will turn your I can't, I will never, I won't, it's impossible. I will turn it around and I will show you that I can do anything, anything. That is my message to you. Let the I can't fuel your fire. I don't really like those words self-help or self-management or self-improvement. I don't really like what those words have come to mean these days. Because there's a, a lot of people out there that are constantly trying to improve themselves by looking for the one change. The one change, right? The one change in their life that's going to make their dreams come true. I'm no guru. And I definitely don't claim to be. I'm just a man. But I will tell you this. It isn't one thing. And it isn't 10 things. And it isn't 100 things. It isn't a quick path. And there are no shortcuts. Meditation won't get you there. And neither will a miracle drug or an organic supplement or some superfood. Getting better isn't a hack or a trick or a one change that you need to make. Getting better is a campaign. It's a campaign. It's a daily, a weekly, it's an hourly fight. An incessant fight that doesn't stop against weakness and against temptation and against laziness. It's a campaign of discipline campaign of hard work and dedication it's waking up early and going to bed late and grinding out every second in between every single day so you want to get better you want to self improve stop looking for a shortcut and go find your alarm clock and find your discipline and find your guts and your passion and your drive and find your will. And then, and then you will find your freedom. We know from our past experiences that big things start small. Uh, you know, it, uh, the biggest oak starts from an acorn and you've got to recognize, if you want to do anything new, you've got to be willing to let that acorn grow into a little sapling and then finally into a small tree and maybe one day it'll be a big business on its own. Basically, you can't skip steps. You have to put one foot in front of the other. Things take time. Uh, you, there are no shortcuts. And, uh, but, uh, but you want to do those steps with, you know, passion and ferocity. Those days when I'm tired or worn out or just basically sick of the grind. Well, what do I do on those days? I go anyways. I get it done even if I'm just going through the motions, I go through the motions. I don't really want to work out. I work out. I, I really don't want to hammer on a project. I hammer on the project. Don't really want to get up and get out of bed. Yeah, I get up and get out of bed. Now, these could be signals that you need some time off. And those signals might be right. They could be correct. But don't take today off. Not today. Wait until tomorrow. 
don't don't give in to the immediate gratification that is whispering in your ear shut that down do not listen to that little voice instead go through the motions sprint the hill work on the project get out of bed now as an overall rule i do not like procrastination you need to get things done but if you are going to rest that is one thing that you should procrastinate on that's the one thing i want you to put off until tomorrow And if, when tomorrow comes, you still feel like you need to rest or you need to take a break, then okay. Take it. But the chances are, you won't. You won't need that rest. Chances are, you will realize that the desire to rest was just weakness. It was just the desire to take the path of least resistance, the downhill path, the easy path. And by simply going through the motions, you overcame that path. And you stayed on the righteous path, the disciplined path. You stayed on the war path, which is right where you know that you belong. Greatness, it's just something we made up. Somehow we've come to believe that greatness is a gift reserved for a chosen few, for prodigies, for superstars. And the rest of us can only stand by watching. You can forget that. Greatness is not some rare DNA strand. It's not some precious thing. Greatness is no more unique to us than breathing. We're all capable of it. All of us. To take that first step yeah. towards greatness is very hard. That's the hardest step of everything, is that first step, right? Yeah. That first step towards greatness is hard. Yeah. But what's a lot harder yeah. is when time expires in life. You look back yeah. on your life, knowing you could have been great. That's something you can't control yeah. anymore because time's run out. But if you don't believe you can do it, don't even start the journey, it's too hard. It's a winnable, easy war. But if you don't, if you don't believe it, then don't do it. If you're trying to do something meaningful, if you don't have the mindset that you're the best ever, you failed already. And that's been my mindset since I can remember. That will be my mindset as long as I can remember anything that I am the best ever at what I do. But my mindset will always be as such as I am the best to do what I do. And that'll give me a shot at being the best. But before you can ever reach anything, you have to believe it. You don't just mistakenly become great at something. You probably at one point, at one time or another, believe that you can be great at that. And then you work to get great at that, and you reach that greatness but you don't mistakenly become great. People don't realize what you got to give up to become great. What sacrifice you got to make to become great. What promises you got to make to yourself to become great. Greatness ain't about myself. Greatness is lifestyle. The key with me is no one will outwork me. No one. I love and I respect you guys. Motherfuckers won't outwork me. 
all starts with this. Two hands, putting it to work. But you cannot erase the work ethic part. There is no getting around. Ain't no elevator to the top. You got to take the stands. The elevator don't go to the top, man. Not in the world of success. You got to take the stands. Y'all got to start getting gritty, man. I hate it when I see young people wasting their time, wasting all this technology got, just sitting around in this world that's been created for you that everything is instant. But if you can combine your technology with your parents and your grandparents' work ethic, you could be rich, man. Just ask yourself this week, do people know you for your work ethic? Are people like, me? you work hard? Are people actually commenting about you showing up early and staying late? Because if they're not, you're just blending in with everybody else's work ethic.